Hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to Oracle Database Administration Workshop. Uh, in in this workshop, we are going to see some of the ASM concept and ASM understanding, and you know some of the basic administration tasks. How you can manage your ASM and database instances, uh, particularly in this chapter, because uh, uh, since we have already completed our installation, ASM installation, Oracle Home installation, and database installation in our previous videos, now it's a time for us to you know do some hands-on experience on 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 ASM architecture wise. Okay, let's continue. Uh, you know, we have seen about uh, logical architecture and the physical architecture of my database, right? Like you know, start with the database blocks and extend segment, table space, and you know, finally, you know, it forms my database. So that is a logical structure. And whereas in, in, in physical structure, it's a physical data files and that is mapped to my database. That is the physical structure of my database and that the another one is logical structure of my database. Where that I, I wanted to correlate with my ASM, you can see that right? this is a physical structure of my database where I have uh, my raw device or the file system are mapped to my uh, Oracle data files and then all combination of Oracle data files will mix my Oracle database. And these Oracle data files are mapped to my ASM file because my database resides on my ASM disk group, right? And they are mapped to my ASM files. And they, this, these ASM files are nothing but combination of ASM extents. And these ASM extents are nothing but combination of my allocation units uh, at, at, at ASM level. So these allocation units are uh, physically mapped to ASM disks. Uh, whatever the disk group it is, a data disk group or record disk group or FRA disk group, whatever the disk group, those allocation units are made up, made, uh, mapped. Uh, and then these ASM disks are nothing but the group of ASM disks will form my ASM disk groups. That is your data, RICO, and FRA. So this is the you know logical structure of my uh, ASM, and this is the uh, physical structure of my database. So if you see here, uh, in simple words, at ASM level, I have ASM disks. By using make by making use of those ASM disks, I will create ASM disk groups. And then how I can correlate this ASM disks and ASM disk groups? This ASM disk is nothing but combination of ASM allocation units. The group of ASM allocation units, units makes my ASM extent and group of ASM extents makes ASM files. And these ASM files resides on my ASM disk group. And in fact, that those are resides on my ASM disk. So these ASM disks are nothing but your uh, OS disks that might be either raw device or OCFS or whatever the formatted disks. So that is the storage segment comparison with my uh, physical database with my ASM logical structure. If that is clear, I'll go further. Uh, why we need ASM and why we don't need ASM. If you see this one without ASM and if you see this side, this is with ASM. These are like my physical disks where I will form my disk group out of this. And then to make use of these disk groups or disks, uh, you know, there should be Oracle database instance where uh, Oracle database server, where, uh, you know, operating system will be running. And you can see here logical volume manager and the file system. So where if you compare with ASM, uh, these are the disks and this is my server and operating system and I have ASM software here. If you use ASM software, ASM software act as my logical value manager on the file system because with the help of ASM libraries, I can format this disk, I can form the disk group and then I can create my database on top of this. You can see DB1, DB2 I formed here and see similarly here DB1, DB2 are formed here and then applications are connecting via DB1, DB2 to my actual physical disks or uh, disk groups. So if you don't want to use ASM, you have to use the third party logical value manager and for the managing of your file system. So again, it is a licensing cost. So you have to pay extra license in order to use your clusterware or the rack uh, you know, out of ASM. So one of the best recommendation is always go with the ASM because uh, you know it's, it's it has a lot of uh, ASM is provided by Oracle and Oracle database will you know works very nicely with ASM uh, libraries. So making use of ASM for my uh, disk group uh, and act as a logical value manager and and for the better performance. So there, there's no stopping you if you can go with the other third party volume manager instead of ASM to make a uh, shared storage and to make a uh, file system and then make use of the uh, these disks for as a disk group to operate your database that no stopping you you can you can use the third party value manager 
but one of the best recommendation is always go with the asm so one of the common question is is the asm is the only option for my cluster where no absolutely no you can have a third party volume manager and uh, you can build your cluster where going next uh, you know already i covered this one like operating system and then there will be uh, automatic storage management inside that uh, you know uh, this this asm will, will act as a dynamic volume manager and the file system and then it will form my asm files that is what we covered here right this asm is a replacement for my file system and the volume manager if you go back here operating system and this is your uh, uh, asm asm provides your volume manager and the file system and you can have your asm files for your database and then your database will be communicating to asm and application will communicate via database or directly to the asm any any configuration you can do it here so these are the points you can read it out uh, you know um one of the best recommendations always go with asm for as a, as a volume manager and the file system because you can see manages oracle data files uh, asm will, will manage my oracle data files and manages application files with with the asm acfs you can mount you can mount this particular asm as a acfs file system and you can dump your application files and spreads data across the disk that this will i'll cover in a while uh, how load balancing and striping and mirroring helps so these are like typically some of the few advantages of having your asm so this is about mirroring and striping so mirroring and striping is nothing but uh, mirroring is like you know having a duplicate copy of your data like if you have uh, data suppose you have a data a b c inserted into your disks and then that a b c will be returned to uh, the the mirrored copies like if a, a is written here b is written here c is written here and the mirrored copy will be returned into these three disks a b and c in case of this disk goes a, a goes and then mirrored copy will be available to serve if you, if you can see right this color uh, the the red and uh, uh, this blue red red and blue is like uh, you know mirror primary copy and secondary copy that kind of mirroring uh, for you know uh, you can in case of if you lost one disk you will be having a mirrored copy striping is nothing but you are uh, you know distributing uh, you know, splitting your data into stripes and writing across all your disks suppose you have four disks and what happens if you have not striped your disk see i have even though i have four disks all data residing on disk 2 and this is like hard disk and all th remaining uh, these three are like cold disk so there is no io here and only on the disk 2 there will be so many ios and this disk may get uh, there is a chance this disk may get corrupted very soon right because a lot of ios and this disk will go under poor performance whereas in these other three disk like disk 1 3 and 4 Not, not uh, almost idle. Like they don't have any data, and then this will be like a long, long last for forever. But since there is a lot of data here, lot of IOs and lot of performance impact here, and this disk may go bad state, right? So to avoid that, whatever data you are inserting, you can insert evenly across all the disks. So the moment you read it, the data will read from all the disks. The moment you write the data, data will write it to all the disks. Suppose if you write A, B, C, D. and then it's not going to write on one disk a will be written to this b will be written to this c will be written to this and d will be written to this so that means a b c d is a, a bunch of characters i will stripe it a and stripe it b and stripe it c and stripe it d and then i will get a four, four stripes and i'll write all the four stripes across all four disks you know that helps in you know lot of performance improvement because the moment you read a b c d all four disks suddenly will give the data a b c d and then you will get a result it will be like faster data fetching suppose on all a b c d will be on one disk you know eventually you will be get, getting like a b c d and then that will be in sequential right so there will be performance impact if you kept all your data on one disk so rather, by distributing your data by, uh, by making use of striping and then you will get some performance improvement and all disk will be hard disk and you know all this will be uh, uh, you know improving your performance at your at your io operation so that is uh, one of the advantages of having striping okay so quiz time what's the benefits of asm what is the advantages of asm mirroring striping ease of management the answer is all three of this you can mirror you can stripe and you can you know the management also easy so all well, answer is all three all of the above so you know let's talk about how asm uh, will start i'll quickly show you here uh, this is the uh, one we did uh, uh, last video right in, in last session we installed our asm and then on top of that we created our oracle data uh, oracle database right 
so the moment you start your asm uh, there's a init process and init that ohd it will be started and then parallel it will start these mini processes so how you can check that one you can do ps hyphen ef grep uh, d dot bin you will see all these process ohd evmd origin cssd and crsd these all are the process will get started and then how you can check those processes running or not like ps hyphen ef grep d dot bin is a one way and other way is plus csm crs ctl stat resource hyphen t you can see right data listener reco asm ons css discmon evmd and orcl this is final database so everything is up and running now here and then finally it will start my asm so i said this init ohst init ohst is uh, very defined it depend on it defined under my uh, this init tab if i do cat of that where is that init dot d give me a second okay if you see here in this particular slash it is init dot d and this is init ohd if i can cat that one this is my refer script so the moment you start it with help of init and init dot ohd will be started and that will run on run level 5 and then this is a script it will start and then that will be responsible of starting your uh, services right so this is this is about the the that that refer script where uh, you know where you can you can see by uh, cat do the cat and then that that refer script is responsible of you know Uh, starting all my uh, ohst service and internally that ohst service is responsible of starting all the remaining service once these all services are started my asm will asm instance will start and listener will start and db instance start and then any user defined applications or services will get start this is about the startup process how it works this is the wrapper script you can see and you can go through it how this wrapper script works right so this is about the wrapper script and then going further okay so i just wanted to give uh, this these are like uh, some extra topic i wanted to talk because you know uh, we have to understand how, how what are the different offerings with oracle right stand alone everyone knows that is like uh, our normal traditional rdbms that is uh, local storage or the remote storage or nfs or whatever it is you will be storing data into like different mount points what are data archive read logs all those mount point and it will be on one server and asm needed no you, you for the stand alone you don't need any asm and it will be having only one instance if suppose prod db is my instance name and prod db is uh, database name and that will be only one install and then auto restart it's not possible so once this uh, server goes down or database does go down does go, uh, goes down your entire uh, db will be down and you know you will not be able to uh, access anything anything on that and uh, stand alone with oracle restart that is what Uh, this is what is the, what is the, this is what our configuration it is if you even though if you see even though it is my stand alone database and it is on my asm so that is why you know the oracle they will call it as oracle restart so asm disk group so storage where is the storage for my this oracle database it will be on my uh, asm disk group like data reco fr whatever disk group and how many servers i need i need only one server because again that is also only one instance and asm is needed yes i need asm for that because my storage will be asm and uh, how many instances one instances if i have prod database i'll be having one instance and this uh, auto restart yes auto restart so suppose this server goes down and once server comes back online asm will be start automatically my database will start automatically that is what auto restart and rack one node rack one node in the sense uh, you know uh, again storage is asm disk group rack one node like data will be on uh, uh, my disk groups data reco whatever this group and uh, server i will be having n number of server like you know i will have a three node rack four node rack five node rack whatever there is no limit on that and then asm needed yes uh, we need a asm like if i have four node rack i will be having asm 1 2 3 4 and then uh, but how many drive instances that database instance will be only one uh, where it is running it is uh, it may be running on server 1 it may be running on server 2 it may be running on server 3 it may be running on server 4 and uh, what are the instance name if i have prod is the db instance name is going to be prod db underscore one prod db underscore two prod db underscore three prod db underscore four uh, the, that depends upon where in which node it is running if it is running on node one it will be prod db underscore one 
if it is running on node 2 it will be prod db underscore 2 if it is running on node 3 it will be prod db underscore node 3 but only one instance will be running at any at any any time any given time uh, automatically the, or, or auto restart yes the moment uh, your cluster goes down or server goes down once it come back online your database will be started automatically and as usual rack everyone knows like again need the uh, disk group and data will be in our data reco and fr disk groups and uh, you know again servers n number of servers you can have like three node rack four node rack five node rack whatever the node rack you can have and those many sm will be running on all the servers and number of instances yes if you have like n node n uh, like four node rack you'll be having four node instances if you have six node rack you'll be having six instances and if the prod db is your database instance name is going to be prod db1 prod db2 prod db3 like if you have four node cluster prod db4 all the four cluster and then automatically restart it will be supported with the rack so this is a different offering and different types of databases will be available just for your information i just uh, put this slide here and then this is again uh, some of the different uh, types again uh, standalone and oracle restart rack one node and rack what are the differences how it works so this is just again same dev db test db sit db and prod db i just give four differences how it works here uh, like uh, for standalone, for standalone, you don't need any uh, any of the ESM here. You can see I have four database. I need four Oracle Home here, and Oracle Restart. I need ASM here. You can see uh, ASM, 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 and then uh, DevDB and TestDB, SIT. Like all four database I can have. And if I have Rack One Node, and again, uh, and uh, and if you see this Rack One Node again, ESM One. Right, so difference between this uh, rack one node and uh, uh, this Oracle restart and rack one node, like you know, you will be having uh, four ASM cluster in order to make uh, sorry four ASM uh, uh, the installation in order to make these four uh, uh, databases right differently. Whereas in rack one node, the same ASM instance, uh, the cluster where will be installed on all four nodes, and those will be serving my this database four databases again rack as usual four nodes. Uh, and then single uh, cluster where on all four nodes and you know you will be running all your uh, four databases like dev db and test db sit db and prod db just uh, illustration i gave just go through it any any doubts here you can you can uh, refer us back we will we'll clarify okay and then some some few of the uh, the the background processes which are uh, you know very very necessary for asm is rbel that is for uh, you know uh, rebalancing the moment one disk goes down the data from that disk will be rebalanced to the other disks so that is a rebalancing purpose it will be used and uh, arbn one or more slave processes that are rebalancing activity so rbal is a primary process and then these are like uh, slaves and the gmon responsible for managing the disk level activities uh, such as the drop offline you know all the all the whatever activity you do at the disk level gmon is responsible for that and mark marks asm allocation unit as a uh, stale when needed uh, you know that that is uh, you know allocating your uh, you know uh, allocation units whenever uh, uh, you know new file is asm file is created or you know whenever the new allocation unit uh, needed when for the database operation onnn uh, one or more asm slave processes forming the pool of connections to the asm instance for the exchanging messages right so then pz9n one or more parallel slave processes used for fetching the data uh, on clustered asm uh, you know uh, installation for example gv dollar the moment if you do gv dollar instance all the four node instance uh, like if you have four node cluster all four node cluster information will be displayed like you know th this pz9n uh, is a like slave process fetching the data from the other cluster uh, instances suppose you have four node cluster five node cluster six node cluster the moment you use the gb dollar the instance the information will be fetched by using this background process from the other cluster nodes and uh, coming to the installation parameter like how the installation parameter works so this like instance type is mandatory it should be asm and asm power limit and uh, disk discovery string is main thing uh, if you mention discovery string then uh, you know your disk group is able to mount because by finding those disks and this is the failover group you can define now it's not mandatory and the diagnostic text uh, diagnostic uh, dest and the large pool and this remote login so quickly i'll log into my asm instance and then i will generate my uh, uh, p file 
plus asm sql plus slash s this is sm remember this is going to be ccsm and uh, show parameter sp file sp file if i do this is my sp file i'll do create p file equal to i'll create p file inside my temp asm p file dot ora from sp file right okay from is a typo here from sp file you can see file created if i cat this one you will see all those parameter cat you can see right Markle base this group asm disk string asm power limit large pool listeners exclusive so all these parameter right like whatever we defined here these are like mandatory parameter needed to start your asm instance okay going next and these are like few of the views you can uh, you can refer it asm malayas asm disk so if you want i can just show you few of them uh, asm disks i can i can show you this one uh, select star from you can see these are like uh, few of the desc describe with dollar asm okay i want to check only select group member and this group uh, uh, status from v dollar asm you can you can query it normal uh, query right these are the disk this uh, group number like disk group 1 disk group 2 and state is normal these are like uh, some of the queries you can you can make use of that and then uh, again you can see right uh, you have to set your environment how you can connect sql plus sql plus ssh sm will connect and do the startup and do the shutdown whatever you want you can do it and we have a separate session on this uh, administration so i'm not going it right now you can see set your inv that is what we did right for connecting you have to log in as a oracle user and uh, you know you have to set the environment as a plus asm or else you can you can just uh, query it right the moment you do ps hyphen ef grep smon you will see it your instance type is plus asm you have to set a environment as a ora ora env and then sorry dot ora env and you have to set plus asm and then log into sql plus slash as sys asm remember this is not a sys dba because all database we used to log in as a sys dba but whereas in your connecting to asm it's going to be sys asm and if you see select uh, instance underscore name comma status from v dollar instance you can see this should be started um, if you see this instance status for your database it will be like dev database and it is a open mode or mount mode or read only mode right or or, or uh, started mode so whereas your asm is always in started mode right so you can use sru ctl uh, sru ctl status i will do that one also um sru ctl status asm it will say whether uh, this is server control utility sr ctl see asm is running on this particular server name this is your host name right so this is about managing and again asm cmd i showed you asm cmd hyphen p you can use hyphen p yeah it log into your asm cmd asm command line and you can do ls dg you can see mounted mounted what are those data and reco both are mounted and if i go into my data and do ls hyphen l inside data you can see the moment i do ls hyphen l here i have asm i have orcl asm is for asm instance and orcl is for my orcl database and this is the asm password file like see ora pw asm this is my asm password file and if i do orcl ls hyphen l and you can see for my orcl database i have my control file data file online log file parameter file and temp file everything you can get it inside your uh, asm cmd asm command line utility you can make use of you know managing all your uh, 
uh, you know uh, data files and if i go inside data file you will see all those if i do ls fnl here you can see sysoc system undo users many anything right and parameter file also here control file also here and you know if you go into rico you will see all your redo logs and all all those stuffs and and you can see in the asm command line also i can do your startup shutdown of your asm instance okay so now the quiz time which parameters are required for asm instance just think of what all needed here instance type asm disk groups large pool size and uh, none of the above so answer is you need all of this instance type asm disk group and large pool size so if i go back uh, to my parameter quickly to show you you can see right asm instance type and uh, disk group disk string and large pool size you know these are like mandatory much needed otherwise your asm is not start and going to the next again i explained you uh, how the mirroring and striping works suppose uh, this is my cluster you can see 1 2 3 4 5 i have five node cluster here oracle rack server five node rack and then asm will be running on all five node you can see asm will be running on asm 1 2 3 4 5 all five and you may or may not have your database on all five nodes you can see database one is running here on these three nodes and this database uh, so on these two nodes and this database will be running on these two nodes and this database will be running on only these nodes right it is it is left to you whether you want to configure your database on two node or three node or four node or five node and at the back end you will be having your disk group a disk group b disk group a it belong to database disk your database one database two and database three i have three database database one is two node rack database two is two node rack and database three is one node rack and you can see database this database one it has a data on my disk group one and this database has data on my disk group two and this database i have a data on disk group one and disk group two you can keep your data anywhere in any of the disk group it is not mandatory you have to keep your data on all the disk group so you can first point is you can create n number of disk group disk group 1 disk group 2 disk group 3 disk group 3 as long as you have enough disks you can create n number of disk groups in esm the moment you create your disk groups you can have data of your database on any of the disk group on all of the disk group or two of the disk groups or any of the disk group you can distribute your data on any of the disk groups that's what the disk group overview in this slide talks about and again allocation unit as i said like it is as the esm logical structure that will be allocated that is starting with 1 mb 2 mb 4 mb 8 mb 60 mb 32 mb 64 mb that is a logical uh, unit allocation unit at at, at your asm uh, level and uh, asm disks are, are striped into allocation unit and my asm files are made up of this allocation unit again see how you how they will manage uh, uh, the group of allocation unit will form my uh, 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 you know uh, asm extent and uh, to manage that asm extent there will be asm extent map you can see asm this is asm file and this file will be combination of asm extent and those extent will be managed using extent maps and these extents are nothing but the combination of allocation unit you can see this is a disk group i have a disk a b c d and these are like allocation unit 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 <laughs> all this allocation unit the pointer will be written to my extent map and this extend map will be assigned to my asm file so this is a kind of you know logical uh, uh, management uh, of my uh, allocation unit on an on, on extent uh, how they are mapped uh, to the disks and to the asm files this is asm file within your asm and this is the actual physical disks present under your disk group and how they will correlate all the allocation units are mapped to my asm files uh by combination of allocation units it will form the extent and extents are mapped to my uh, asm files and uh, in between this actual allocation unit and the asm files there's the extent map will is like uh, holding the pointers of each allocation units uh, to the uh, actual uh, asm files so this is internal to the asm they will manage it but when you hit into some performance uh, issues by io or some disk operations though then you need to look into this extent maps and how it allocated and all those you have to tune this but otherwise uh, very rare i have seen like uh, the issue with the extent maps and all so asm is uh, smart enough to manage all this internally so st again striping i said striping is nothing but dividing your data into 
chunk of data and writing into all of your disk so because you know if you write all your data into all of the disk the io operation will be distributed across all of the disk all the disk will be in healthy so again striping you can go with the coarse and fine grain two are the two methods coarse and fine grain i'll explain what is the coarse and fine grain you can see this is a coarse grain and uh, you can see fine grain fine grain is like 128 kb and coarse is like uh, 1 mb uh, <coughs> sorry guys okay so you have like uh, okay so you have your uh, coarse uh, gr uh, fine grain or the coarse striping coarse grain striping in anything you you cannot fine grain is the one for you know very very small uh, uh, striping that is 128 kb and otherwise it will be like 1 mb uh, of default uh, striping <laughs> so discrete so for example uh, example i'll illustrate how it works with a disk group of eight disk i have eight disk here and i made one disk group here uh, uh, and the external and whatever redundancy see you can go with the default allocation size will be one mb in use and uh, first one mb extent will be written to one eight one twenty eight case types across all the disks so for example i have one mb so that will be divided into one twenty eight kb and then that will be written into all of eight disks and then um, uh, and then uh, the 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 basic questions you should ask it right? when i use the coarse grain and fine grain the coarse grain is the larger in size allocation it uh, and then the coarse uh, fine grain is the smaller in size so smaller in the sense the moment it says smaller in size 128 kb so your control file will, will come into picture right so your control file and and your redo logs because uh, you know a lot of ios will be happening and you know a lot of small update will be happening at your control file and redo logs right so the fine grain is basically for your control files and the redo log files and your coarse grain is for your data files and you know other other files Right, so then uh, we'll go into failure groups. So we talked about mirroring, right? So I have the eight disk groups. I have eight disks, and then I made a disk group A, and then I will divide eight group into eight disk into two groups, like failure group one and failure group two. Uh, four disk here and four disk here. Like you know, if I write A, B, C, D, four date four blocks here, and mirrored copy will be written to A, B, C, D uh, here, because what happens? If you lose entire failure group, so if you lose all these four disks, your entire A, B, C, D data will be still available, right? So you return A, B, C, D, and the mirrored copy will be returned to A, B, C, D. And the moment you lose your entire failure group, your entire A, B, C, D data will be available here. Suppose what happens if you write A, if you write A here, and if you write A, B, C, D. Suppose, like you know, if you if you don't have this failure group concept, if you write data A here and B, C, D, if you write like this uh, randomly, the moment you lose this this disk, what happens? Like you know, you may get to your data may get lost, right? Or else, like rather than that, I will give a simple example. Like I write A here, I write B here, and then I write again A here, uh, like A, B. And then mirrored copy also. If I write A here, if I lose this this particular disk, and then I will lose that content A because that mirrored copy has not written here, right? That is the reason. You know, the moment any data returned to failure group one or the disk disk one, the mirrored copy should be right written to the the respective failure group. Uh, if I have this failure group four disk and uh, the the failure group two uh, uh, four disks are mapped for those particular disk. So any data or any copy returned to the failure group one and the mirror copy should be returned to failure group two. It should not write within the same failure group. For example, if I write A, B, C, D, I have four data written here, and the mirror copy has to write on the failure group. Suppose mirror copy is written to like here only in this group only A, B, C, D. Even though I have data A here and mirror copy here, if I lose this entire failure group, I may lose that data, right? So the, to avoid that loss of data, even even when you lose your con entire controller, so you know your failure group comes into picture. So that's why you know you need to define your failure group while creating your disk group. So that is about the failure group concept. And then again, uh, you know, I just gave an example illustration here how the failure group works with with the failure groups. You can see here, right? Uh, I have a data. You can see. Uh, I, I'll just go with this one. Two. 
first we'll start with the primary accent that is uh, that is a red one red is a primary and this this uh, 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 green is the secondary copy i have one here two here and three here four here for this one the mirrored copy has to write on the failure group one because actual copy and failure group two the mirrored copy has to go to other group i written here i have two on my failure group one the mirrored copy has to go to failure group two i have two here i have three on the failure group one the three should not be here in this four disk the three should be on any of this disk you can see three is here and i have four on my failure group one and then the mirrored copy has to go to failure group two you can see the four is here so that is why you know the moment you lose this one the suppose assuming failure group two has corrupted this entire four disk gone in in entire four disk what are my primary action one and five if i lose one and five and i can still get that one and five from this failure group one that is a concept of failure group so even though if you lose the entire controller of this four disk and this all four disk will go off the moment you four disk go off automatically the mirrored copy will become active here okay that's what i explained here if i lose this particular disk and this is a five is a primary copy five i lost the primary copy automatically uh, this five and three will be the like five will be returned to here and three will be returned to here so the copy will get activated so managing your disk group again uh, create disk group alter disk group drop disk group you can do any kind of activity we will have a separate session on this management you can connect here and connect to sm and you know just a simple create disk group disk group what are the redundancy and drop disk group you can just drop it so we'll have a separate session on this managing disk group and uh, you know alter disk group you can add the disk existing disk group i have a disk group a i'm going to add few more disks here using alter disk group alter disk group and add instead of uh, adding all this i will just give a star you can see sd star if you the moment you give sd star here all the disk will be get add here disk formatting disk group rebalancing all this like uh, whatever this this is the rebalancing right the moment this goes off whatever data will be returned back to this 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 mirrored copy will be get activated that is the rebalancing i'll explain that in a while how the rebalancing works and alter disk group drop you can do right and then uh, alter disk group drop disk and uh, you can add one more controller you can you can do any kind of operation we will we'll, we'll see all this in a while so the quiz time fine grain typing by default is used for like you know choose to answer fine grain is used for data files control file temp files online read log files or sp file where we, for which which of the files fine grain is used so answer is for your control file and read log files okay so preparing and that's it for the asm so we have seen this this chapter already we created our asm instance and database instance and you know oracle uh, home everything we we already seen it in our uh, previous session so now we will quickly uh, get into some lab uh, demonstration whatever the disk groups and whatever the management will see it so that's it for the uh, asm uh, architecture and asm understanding we'll see with some of the lab uh, demonstration now uh, thank you guys